good to go ahead and get started with our devotion on the evening service. We want to thank everybody for coming out this evening and for worshiping with us. And we uh, ask that if you would please uh, turn your cell phones off or any other noise making devices so we will not be distracted. Uh, for those who will be reading out the song book, it's 638, it's the first song. A few announcements right quick before we get started. Uh, daily, daily Bible reading schedule for in the, on the table in the foyer. Uh, it's uh, good for the whole year. And uh, so pick up one of these. Uh, also, Logan would like to meet with the parents of the junior youth group after service tonight down front. And the medical forms are due by Sunday. Uh, he's just give them back to Logan. Also, uh, a couple other announcements. I got a text message, Shannon Brown's cousin, the one, uh, Tammy Thompson, that was mentioned, that she had a prayer for her. She said her and her family is doing well or doing better. So that's good. Also, Russell Myers fell at work, resulting in possible brain trauma. He's at home right now on heavy physical and mental restrictions to prevent further damage. Please, no calls or text at this time due to his restrictions. So let's remember him and the family in our prayers. And if you will, uh, bow with me and we'll get started in our evening service. Heavenly Father, we, we do come before you this time thanking you so very much, Father, for this day that you give us to be alive for each one of us and the help that we have that we can come out, Father, and to uh, sing songs to you and study your word and pray to you, Father, and, and encourage one another. We're so grateful for every opportunity we have to come together as a body and we just Pray, Father, as each and every time that we come together, that we, everything that we do is always in accordance with your will. And that we look in our hearts, Father, and, and make sure that we're uh, paying attention and worshiping and focusing on you and singing to you, Father, from our hearts and so that our worship is pleasing to you from each individual one. Father, we do thank you so much for all your love and care for your Son and for your Holy Spirit for each one, what you do for us and give us each and every day. And we are so thankful for your word that you preserve for us, Father, that we can read and study. And we, we pray, Heavenly Father, that as we look at your word and study your word, that we take your word to heart and put, put your word in our lives, Father, to, to make us be the people who you have us to be, to be pleasing servants in your kingdom, Father. We do pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, Russell Myers, those who are attended to him and his family, we pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, things uh, might seem a little bleak right now, Heavenly Father, but he'll get good results and things will be okay. And we just pray that you'll help him and help him to recover quickly, Heavenly Father. And we do pray again for all of our brothers and sisters. We have many who are in the bulletin and have needs and problems. And, going through different things and we just pray and Father that you'll be with each and every individual one with their particular needs and problems and help us Father to, to reach out and be able to help our brothers and sisters who need help. And we pray Heavenly Father that you'll continue to help us as we encourage one another and to work together to serve and glorify you and help us to, to take your word to others and to teach others your word Father and try to help touch their lives so that they can be part of your kingdom and one day uh, live in heaven with us, Father. We thank you so much again for what you do and give us and for all your love and for all the things that you bless us with, Father. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Tonight we'll be singing Sister Eric, when the not the first day of her song. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the holy grace eternal.
Good evening. So uh, tonight, again, uh, I think the last time I said I was going to try for a shorter lesson and it still went uh, long. Um, to, <laughs> I'm trying to rectify that tonight. Uh, tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, doomsday prayers. Uh, the, you know, those people that hoard up, you know, uh, a ton of guns and, and like 16 gallons of mayonnaise and uh, they're, they're waiting for, you know, for the worst to happen. But, um, and like I do with a lot of my lessons, I, I, I got a definition off the internet, and uh, so I wanted to, to define preppers so we don't be on the same page here. Um, so a prepper, a person who believes a catastrophic disaster or emergency is likely to occur in the future and makes active preparations for it, typically by stockpiling food, ammunition, and other supplies. And there's an entire industry that caters to these people. I mean, you can get MREs that last for like 10 years and, and uh, you know, like I said, giant vats of non-perishable goods. Um, and I thought they were real crazy, a little less so after 2020 and not being able to find toilet paper for a month or two. Um, but I wanted to look at this from a, a spiritual standpoint because I think these preppers might be on to something. Uh, if we look at that definition, it says uh, not only that they believe a catastrophic, catastrophic uh, event is coming, but they're active in preparing for it. Now, I hope we can all ask ourselves, am I active in a coming event? Am I actively preparing for that coming event? Um, and we all know that at some point Jesus Christ will come back to this earth. Or, if not that, then we will die before he comes back. One way or another, there is an event coming. And I hope that we can all ask ourselves if we're actively preparing for it. So how, how do we do that? What does that look like? Um, if you would, turn to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, read verse 33. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. So the whole thing is about where we're setting aside our things. If, if it's in a bunker under your house, I mean, that's an option. Uh, but we're trying to set up things in heaven where that, that stuff will, will go on forever. Uh, we're all prepping for something. And that's either a comfortable life as you get older and extra money that you can give to your kids one day, or that's uh, a shelter to live in through World War III, or it's preparing for an eventual home uh, with God in heaven. And uh, this is not anything new. Uh, if you look in Hebrews chapter 11, it, it talks about a lot of people that had faith. One that they mentioned uh, there is Moses. Uh, the writer of Hebrews talks about Moses and his refusal to live as the daughter of Pharaoh, where he would have had everything he could have possibly desired here on, here on earth. And it says he, he considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking for the reward. He was looking for a reward later, a better reward later. And that has to be our attitude as we, as we go through life. Because despite Moses being Moses, Moses still died. Moses met his end. And because of the life that he lived on earth and the way that he lived it, he got to set some things aside so that he would have it forever in, in, in heaven with Christ. And there's no amount of guns or MREs or whatever it happens to be that we can, we can stockpile that will keep that from happening. Uh, we can't use everything here, and, and at some point we're going to be gone. And, and the last verse I wanted to look at here was 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 18 through 19. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. And uh, I really like the ending of that, that they may, may take hold of that which is truly life. Truly life. What we are living here right now, and yes, we are, we're all alive, right? But what, what we are living in right now is a mere shadow of the life that we can have one day in heaven. This is fleeting and temporary in every sense of those words. And, and it will all be gone one day. And I hope and pray that we can one day look and say, yeah, I set aside things and I prepped and I was active in that preparation and setting those things aside that truly matter. So, 
This is something we all struggle with, right? We, we live in this world and things are always happening. I've got a three-year-old. I'm worried about saving money for her. I am. But the problem we can run into is that we start to elevate those things above the spiritual. And that is, that is a constant battle we'll probably have, but it's one that we better, better choose the right side. We better prep for the right thing uh, and instead of, of just focusing on, on these, these earthly treasures. I think we all know that. We, like, we've, read, we've read these words. It's just something I think we need to remind ourselves of on a pretty constant basis. So, if you have been, have been struggling a little bit, if you've been living a life that we know that you haven't been, been storing up those treasures in heaven, instead you've been focusing on the, the cares of this world, um, if there are some, some prayers that you would, would need, if you'd love, like to put on Christ in baptism, that water is, as usual, always ready. If there's anything we can do for you, come now and stand up and kind and gracious heavenly father we thank you dear lord for allowing us together tonight to study your word dear lord to hear a message from it and dear lord we hope that we are living a pleasing life before you dear lord just help all of those that are sick at this time and dear lord help them in only the way you can dear lord we offer a sp special prayer for a uh, russell myers dear lord and to, to be with him and to to help him to heal uh, quickly dear lord uh, if it be your will, dear Lord, and to be with his family and comfort them uh, through this trying time, dear Lord, be with so many others uh, that have faced various illnesses, cancer, uh, COVID-19, and so many other things, dear Lord, and dear Lord, just help them to heal, help them to recover, dear Lord, especially be with those that are spiritually lost, dear Lord, help them to see the error of their ways, dear Lord, help us to be shining lights to them, dear Lord, as for your church, we pray for boldness, Lord, we pray, pray for courage, dear Lord. Lord, we, we pray for that endurance to endure to the, to the end. Lord, just guide, guard, and protect us. Forgive us when we sin, dear Lord, and thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this avenue of prayer we can come before you, dear Lord. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>